Welcome back to another episode of Eric's Camping Adventures. We're going to go on another search today looking for some beautiful places. Well, it was a pretty quiet stay last night. Um, it was Thompson Grove Picnic Area Campground in the Rita Blanca National Forest. I actually slept pretty good last night and uh, I am taking off now for uh, the Carson National Forest over in uh, northern New Mexico. I got moving this morning on a humid overcast morning passing through small towns but if you know anything about west texas and northern new mexico it doesn't take very long for the sun to burn off that humidity and yeah it was nice to see those mountains off at the horizon I'm pulling into the town of Cimarron, New Mexico, and the plan is to access uh, National Forest Road 204 and head up into the mountains. I'm gonna step out here for a few minutes and take care of a couple things. I'm gonna air down. Um, at my last uh, oil check, I uh, noticed there's a little spray coming out around the radiator, so I'm gonna check on that, maybe tighten the hose. And uh, I lost my speedometer somehow after my last fuel up. I'm going to get under the Jeep and I'm just going to pull the speedometer gear real quick. I'm going to make sure that uh, the plastic is still intact and that the metal is not uh, getting sucked into the gears of the transfer case. Uh, should only take a couple seconds here to do this. Definitely worth the check. Well, I checked the uh, coolant level, it looks fine. Um, pulled the gear for the speedometer just to make sure it was intact. Everything looks good, so we're just gonna proceed down the National Forest Road. Who knows, maybe that speedometer will start working again. That just is a little odd. <laughs> and I have actually camped at this campground before. There are two different routes up. I'm taking a different route this time, so I actually don't know this road at all. But I will tell you this, I know that the road is much more comfortable aired down. Last time we did this, we did this in the Subaru Impreza and we were unable to air down much because the 
trailer weight on the rear tongue pushed down the rear independent suspension enough on the Subaru that I was a little concerned about airing down. So this is a lot more comfortable even than the ride of a Subaru. that driving over these national forest roads the confidence level of using this jeep instead of that subaru impreza or even the honda pilot with the rear locker um, this was confidence um, this was assurance that i was going to be able to get through these trails I did come up on a retreat center and it did appear to have a uh, chapel and some stables and some other amenities uh, just to kind of get away from it all. But I was glad to be in my Jeep. Um, the trail went down to kind of a single track after uh, uh, passing the retreat center and the road was just a little bit rougher.
have to admit, if I was on this road right now with the Honda Pilot, <laughs> I would be panicking. <laughs> be a happy person that GPS sent me this direction but uh, this is okay in the Jeep I'm very confident of its ability to get me through here and up to the campground I have about uh, seven miles to go and I don't have any doubt we'll get there this is just a really interesting route compared to what we took last time with the uh, Subaru uh, I'd be panicking with the Subaru too. came up kind of fast. I guess I know my drum brakes were good. That was a back rear tire squeal in there. trespassing entrance by written permission only elk hunt in progress ah. I wondered if that was going to happen, so I'm going to have to head all the way back down and then uh, head up the way that Michelle and I went uh, about uh, three years ago. And uh, we're about seven miles in, and I had four to go to the campground, so uh, yeah, that's a little crazy. <laughs> but I guess uh, Google Maps doesn't know about uh, road closures for uh, hunting access.
have to admit there was a little fatigue in my body at this point from all of the vibrations and the uh, driving. And here I am headed up the mountain again, just a different way. That's a little frustrating when uh, the road is closed and you're almost there. I mean, we were within like four miles of the campground and, uh, and the road was closed. So it said only written access for hunting. So we had to have written permission. So this is Forest Road 1950, and we are headed back up elevation to get to the Cimarron Campground. That is the goal. I think I actually see a little darkness up by the mountains up there. I wonder if that is a storm. At this point, I was kind of admiring some of the flat areas off to the west and just thinking about some places to do some dispersed camping because of that storm that looked like it was up in the mountains. But there's McChrystal campground up ahead, and I think I'm gonna stop and check that out. Right up ahead is the uh, McChrystal campground, and I'm actually gonna pull through there just in case. Um, I'd like to 
get up to the Cimarron if I can and stay there because it's a little closer to the pass and I want to get uh, down into that valley in the morning where the sunlight will hit some of the canyons. Uh, so I'm going to pull through here and just see what it looks like. First impression here is is that there's some nice spots open and available if I need to run back down the mountain from a storm and second uh, there's a variety of campsites there are uh, uh, shaded there are Sun for solar uh, there is uh, some things to do here there is a horse camp around the other side um, there is a trail to the ring homestead and then there's the McChrystal Creek to the north of the campground, which uh, I imagine that'd be a nice place to explore for kids. open if I need to come back down there is just nobody there so that's a little bit of uh, an insurance policy so I'm gonna head on up to uh, Cimarron and just see what's up there for I think that's the first drip on my windshield. Hopefully it just stays uh, a drip. This is the valley right before the uplift and the campground is on the uplift right where we're looking at all that fog right now if that's fog um, I bet it's just a little bit more than that A couple minutes out from the campground and this is just guaranteeing to be an interesting setup. That is snow coming down out there. I got a t-shirt on and uh, hey, here we go. <laughs> the weather can change in the mountains in a minute. 